I'm Dr. Joan Arvidson, a speech language pathologist at the Children's Hospital of Wisconsin in Milwaukee, and spend a lot of my time working with families and babies and children who have problems feeding and swallowing. So I'm going to spend a few minutes talking to you today with some information about the video swallow study, which some of you find that your children get scheduled for, and you may have some questions about what the study is, when we do it, and what our purposes are. So I'm going to try to cover a few of those questions that you might have, whether you have a tiny baby or an older child. So we'll just talk a little bit about that video swallow study. First of all, what is it? It's a radiology study in which we make a videotape where we can actually see where food and liquid is going from the time it enters the child's mouth, through the, across the tongue, through the throat, and into the food tube, the esophagus. And we're particularly looking to make sure that nothing is getting into the trachea, which is the airway, or if it is, what it is that we can do about it. Now this study actually has several names. Some of you may have heard about a modified barium swallow study, a video fluoroscopic swallow study, a rehabilitation study, but whatever the name is, it does essentially the same thing by making a video that we can actually see what's going on with a particular focus in the back of the throat. No matter how many babies and children we watch feeding, just whether they're feeding at by nipple or whether they are feeding by a spoon or they're doing finger feeding, we can only kind of infer or make some guesses about what's happening in the back of the throat and at the actual point of the swallowing. So this does let us do that. However, it is a radiology study, so we're very careful about how much time and when we plan the study because we know that we don't want any of you to have your children have any more radi radiation studies than what they really need to have. Children who have difficulty swallowing, and particularly if they have been born prematurely or maybe have some kind of a neurologic problem, or they have had any number of surgeries, maybe through their gastrointestinal tract or cardiac surgeries, they may also have some reduced sensation about where food might be going. You and I cough pretty hard when something goes down the wrong tube. Sometimes that's the way we refer to it. Oops, it went down the wrong tube but we cough and we expect that we clear it out. Interestingly enough, many babies and children who have swallowing problems don't cough in response to getting something into their airway. And that's what we call aspiration. Aspiration is defined as anything that gets into the airway. It could be food, it could be liquid, it could be saliva, it could be even if a baby spits up or has a vomiting that could get a little bit of that into the airway. Well, that's not the kind of thing we're looking at in the swallow study. We're looking at what happens as food and liquid goes down while they're eating and drinking. Now, we look at the child from the side. So we actually focus in from about the nose to this part of the throat, just below where the vocal folds, where the entrance to the airway is. And it's interesting that the entrance to the airway is at essentially the same level as the entrance to the food tube or the esophagus. So the esophagus is closed tightly, except when we swallow, and the airway is open, except when we talk or when we swallow. So it's incredibly close timing and coordination that's needed for us to swallow safely, particularly to swallow liquid, which can move so fast through our throat and into the esophagus. So we look at them from the side. We position a child very similarly to how you would actually feed the child. 
So if it's a baby, we'll get that baby in a seat and perhaps be able to position them in whatever angle you would hold them so we can change the seating to get the best position. And sometimes in the context of the study, we will change the position because that may make it easier for your baby. Sometimes children feed better, at least tiny babies, when they are lying on their sides compared to when they are in a semi-upright seated position. So we can make all of those changes in a very short time right in radiology. Occasionally we will look from the front as well when there may be some difference of how we think food or liquid would be moving down one side compared to the other, but usually we just look at the side. So the radiologist focuses the camera, the speech pathologist and the parent present the food, and we get a number of swallows. It's not really a specific fixed number, but we try to get the whole study done within two to no more than three minutes to be able to observe the child when the child takes liquid, however they take it at home, and then maybe make the changes to see if we can make it even safer and more efficient. Children who take thicker food will do spoon feeding, and children who do some solid food, we might take a bite or two of the solid food. But our focus is not on what happens in the mouth, so we don't really focus on chewing food. We can tell that pretty well by watching a child eat, but we cannot tell what happens in the back of the throat. So when we do the study, we get as many swallows as we think we need in order to make the recommendations, and then we review the study with the parent so that you should, at whatever hospital you have the study, you should be able to look at the videotape with the person who has done it and then get some good recommendations about how the findings in this examination fit into the total picture. We always remember that this is just what we sometimes call a very short window in time. It does not really uh, simulate or re it's not really a total meal, so we cannot say how different a child might be near the end of a feeding or perhaps at the end of the day compared to if we do the study early in the day, but what we really do is get a good indication of the timing and the coordination and the strength of the process of swallowing. And that is the purpose of the examination. Some of you might find that the examination is recommended to rule out aspiration. And that is not really the purpose of the study. If we do get aspiration, it's an important finding. And it's important then to note whether it happens just before a swallow is initiated, during a swallow, or even after a swallow, if the muscle action is weak and there might be food still sitting in the back of the throat, and on what textures. So those are important findings, but the real purpose is to define what the swallowing function is so that we can make the safest plans about oral feeding for every one of your babies or children who need this examination. Often the question comes up, is this painful or is it uncomfortable or what happens if my child gets upset? It is not painful or uncomfortable. We do have to mix a little bit of barium contrast in the food and the liquid. So food and liquid doesn't taste the same or some products are made already pre-prepared that might be used. However, some children get upset just when they come into the hospital into a radiology room. So we work very hard to make them, to help them be calm and help them be happy 
We can use their own utensils, we can use their own cups, we can use their own bottles. If some children even need to have a little music in the background or something that keeps them calm and happy and we keep the parents right in the room as much as possible too, occasionally a parent will say, I think he'll do better if I'm not in the room. Well, then we make those adjustments too. But for the most part, children do much better when their parents are right there. So we make it be as comfortable and as typical as we possibly can because we need to have a cooperative, happy child. And that's the way we carry it out. We always remember that if this is just part of the puzzle and we need to put all the pieces of the puzzle together. So hopefully this has been helpful to give you a little bit of added information about what a video fluoroscopic swallow study is. If you may be anticipating this for your child or perhaps your child has already had one of these studies. Thank you very much. There's so many questions that come up in relation to what do we see on the fluoroscopy study and then how we take that information and make recommendations. So we've talked about aspiration as being an important finding, although not the purpose of the examination. And then what is it that we actually see when we're looking in that back of that throat? Well, sometimes we can see a child who makes maybe eight or even 10 swallowing motions before they clear that one bite of food out of their throat. Sometimes babies will suck five or six times before they get enough out of a nipple to make a swallow happen. Well, that's gonna be a lot of effort. It's going to be hard work, and children learn at a very young age, young infants as well as older kids, that if it's too much work, it's not worth it. Or if it hurts, it's not worth it. So we can have those same kinds of things. When we look in the swallow study, and when we go over it with you as parents, and we see that it may be that a child swallows, but then there's still stuff sitting in the back of the throat. So then you have to try to swallow it again. And maybe that spills into the airway, or it doesn't feel very comfortable, or it's just really hard work. The key thing here is that there are going to be different recommendations made depending upon what those specific findings are. And it may mean not just doing therapy or oral motor work, it may be that you've got to get back to some other physician or something else needs to be done. That's where the whole team comes into play. Another finding that we will often see with children is that there may be big tonsils that are deep in the throat and they're not even all that big when somebody just looks into the mouth. So when we see that and we find that maybe food kind of clings to those tonsils and doesn't clear through the throat, well then something has to be done about possibly considering even getting those tonsils removed. Now, I'm not the one who would say whether tonsils should come out or not, but that gets the child back to the ear, nose, and throat specialist, the otolaryngologist, to help sort out all of the issues. So although the video swallow study is just a short window in time, it's like a snapshot, doesn't tell us what happens at the end of meals or at the end of the day, or when a child gets sick, or when he's tired, but it does give us some basic information about timing, coordination, and strength, and then we put that together with all of the other pieces of the puzzle because the whole thing, it's a big puzzle and all the pieces have to get put together. So it takes a team, it takes multiple kinds of exams in some instances, but it also takes a lot of problem solving and thinking with parents, child, and those other professionals as well. So keep that in mind as you are seeking searching out what it is that can help your child the best, and then this study has to be done with a lot of knowledge and information and efficiently too. So there are a lot of questions to ask, you ask them, and we'll help you sort out the answers. We need your help. We need your financial support. You can visit our website to learn more about our organization. We want you to know more about this. Please tell your friends about it. Please be our champion. We need to spread the word, and we're relying on you.